Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. I'm Meyer Stahl, the pastor of the Southern New Mexico Church of God, bringing you the program, What is Truth? The topic today is What is Truth? Part 4. We did three programs on what is truth. If you missed any of them, call us. We'd be happy to send you the DVDs of any of the programs you missed. Now, we have two booklets. They're absolutely free. There's no charge. There's no, we never ask the public for money. The first one is Lazarus and the Rich Man. And the booklet says, Do People Burn Forever in a Hellfire? Thousands have asked for the true explanation of Lazarus and the rich man. Here is what the Bible says. <coughs> Excuse me. The second booklet is, Where are Enoch and Elisha? At the bottom of the booklet it says, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Yet the Bible reveals that they're not in heaven today. So where are they? Here's the astounding truth. Fantastic booklets. You will enjoy these booklets. And they're easy to read. Takes you maybe 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. To read them. Now we're uh, we're looking to open up a Bible study in El Paso, Texas. If you are in El Paso, Texas, and you are interested in it, it's free. There's no cost. There's no obligation. We teach the Bible. Now it's non-denominational, non-sectarian. You don't have to be any particular. Uh, religion, it's, we study the Bible, just plain Bible. And you could come, you could ask questions, you can bring, uh, you can uh, bring up topics, what you would like to study, and we'll study the Bible. It's not reading the Bible, it's studying the Bible. So if you've ever sat down and you're reading the Bible and you get discouraged and you give up, I, you know, sometimes you get to the uh, various genealogies and that stops you. You don't go any further than the genealogies. So this is a Bible study. We, we're looking for 10 people, the first 10 people with, to, to be able to start it. We need a minimum of 10. So if you're interested, why don't you call us at 575 Six five zero seven three five nine. And now my co-host is Dave Gallus. Welcome, Dave, to the program. Hi, Meyer. You, uh, you have a booklet that yes. you would like to share. Uh, I'm one of the co-writers of the Issachar publication. It's uh, identifying the different problems that we find in everyday life now throughout the world, locally, and we use biblical history. We use our personal experiences and we try to find solutions to the problem. So if you give me a call at 856-952-7343, I'll be glad to send you a free copy. No postage, nothing. I'll send it to you free. Well, terrific. Well, I've, I've read the Issachar and it's very interesting. I recommend that. Okay, I listen to the radio when I'm driving along. And I usually listen to the religious programs because I want to understand what the other ministers and pastors are teaching. And even though many seem to have different doctrines, they seem to mainly have the same thought about going to heaven. So they pretty much all say, uh, when you die, 
uh, if you're in Christ and you're saved, you go to heaven. You've heard that, the, yes. haven't you, Dave? I, I grew up Catholic, and that's, you know, I'm waiting when I, well, according to the Catholic faith, when I die, I expect to see my grandmother waiting for me in heaven. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm understanding differently now. Okay. Is it true when Christians die, they automatically go to heaven? Now, we know Revelation chapter 21 and 22 talks about uh, the saints in heaven. That's true. But there's a whole lot more that's going to happen before uh, you get to Revelation chapter 21 and 22, before we enter heaven. So what does the Bible teach? Where do Christians go when they die? Our purpose today is to let the Bible tell us the truth. So Dave, would you turn in your Bible to John chapter 3 and read verse 13? Okay, John 3, 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Oh, wait a minute. That's that, that, this means that the only person that's in heaven is Jesus along with God the Father. That's right. Nobody else. Nobody else except for angels. All right. This is, and that's it. This is interesting. This is interesting, isn't it? Oh. Uh, I bet most of you never heard that. Or you read that and you just read over it. Why don't you, why don't you read Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 22. Okay. Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid out at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so here we have two people who died. Lazarus, it says Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom. That's right? confusing. Does it say he went to heaven? No. Does it say anywhere there no. that he no. went to heaven? No. Okay, now what is Abraham's bosom? That's the, that's the real question. Okay. Okay, Abraham's bosom is his chest. Right. Look, in the, look in the dictionary and you'll see a bosom is a person's chest, okay. as a human being's chest. And you take your arms and you wrap it around and you, you wrap it around and you hug the person. You're bringing that friend, that loved one, into your chest. Makes sense. That's your bosom. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, it's the breast of a human being. It's an intimate relationship. We call it a hug. To hug somebody, right? Right, sure. We do that. So Lazarus could have been a Gentile. It's possible. Now, he comes in to a relationship with Abraham. How does that take place? Let's read it in Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 to 29. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay. So you come wow. into the promise of Abraham, Abraham's promise. But we're not Jewish. We're not Jewish. It doesn't make any difference. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. So this business of seed, well, it's not one. a blood relation. No. It's a spirit relation. Exactly. Ah. So we're all one okay. in Christ, and we're all Abraham's seed. Okay. We come into the relationship with Abraham. Okay. So Lazarus, being a Gentile, comes in, and he, he's, Abraham hugs him, uh, brings him into his bosom. Okay. And he gives him a big hug. Okay. All right. When does this take place? 
That's the real question, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's the biggie. Okay, let's go down and let's find out what the promise was. Okay? okay. He's going to share the promise. Okay. Right? Genesis chapter 12, verses 5 to 7. Genesis 12, 5. Then Abraham took Sari, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abraham passed through the land of the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moray, and the Canaanites were, in, were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So I'm also a descendant. Yeah. The wow. promise is the land of Canaan. That's the promise. Ah. Okay. Let's read another promise in Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 to 16. Genesis 13, 14. And the Lord said to Abraham after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make you descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Okay, so he's talking about forever. Forever means eternal life. You're okay. going to have eternal life. You're going to own that land. It's going to be yours. Mm. That was the promise God gave to Abraham and to his seed. So Us. Lazarus would be one who would be an heir. Even though he's a Gentile, and like you myself. would be an heir, okay. and I'm an heir. It's nice to know. We're all heirs, right? <laughs> yes. Of what? Of the land of Canaan. That's the promise. Okay. Okay. Let's go now to Genesis chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. Genesis 15, 18. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the, the river Euphrates, the Canaanites, the Kenazites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephraim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gigashites, and the Jebusites. And even the Termites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only one they left out. Holy yeah, smokes. they left the Termites out. Wow. So he... So Abraham gets all that land. Now, he died not having received the promises. Right. Abraham died not having received the promises. Okay. Okay, would you turn now, Dave, to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, don't start reading. We're going to uh, take a very short break. Uh, but folks... I, I want to make sure that you understand uh, before we go any further. G God did not promise heaven. He didn't start out promising heaven. He started out promising the land of Canaan mm. to Abraham. That's the promise. Okay. Before we get into Hebrews, we're going to understand that this is the promise, and we're going to see that Abraham never received that promise. So we're going to take a short break, folks. Please don't go away. There's so much more you're going to want to hear. We'll be right back. Hi, Las Cruces, just hanging out by the pool. Do you want to promote your business or event? Well, check out our website 
and watch your profits go up. Come to Tacos El Borrego de Oro in Las Cruces. We are celebrating $1 Taco Tuesdays. Come enjoy authentic Mexican food for the whole family. Bring the family to Tacos El Borrego for $1 Taco Tuesday and Flauta Thursdays. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, our topic is What is Truth? Part 4. Now, if you missed any of this, uh, missed the beginning, uh, you can always ask for a DVD. We could send you a DVD for free. And uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're going back to the story of Abraham. Let's First go, we were going to the Hebrews 11. Let's first go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 and 29. Would you read that, Dave? Sure. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Can't get so any you, plainer than that. Yeah, you, you, you become as a, a descendant of Abraham. As you, long as you you're are You're adopted Jesus. by Abraham as long as you're in Christ. Yep. Okay, let's go now to Hebrews chapter 11. And would you read eight verses 8 to 10, verse 13, and verses 38 to 40. Okay. Hebrews 11, 8. 8 to 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, their heirs with him, the same promise, for he waited for the city which, was, which has foundations whose builders and maker is God. Okay, then now 13. read verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Okay, ah. they died in faith, not having, not having received the promises So they're not yet. going to heaven right away. Okay, so, well, that's true. Okay, keep reading. But having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Okay, and now read 38. 39, 30, 39 and 40, 38. 38 to 40. Okay, 38 to 40. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and mountains, in the dens and the caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Did not receive the promise. Okay. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Okay. So they're waiting for us. Okay. Okay. They're waiting in their graves. This is all the saints. This is all the prophets. This is all the holy men of God. Where are they now? They're in their graves waiting for what? The resurrection. Uh, the That's second what the, coming. The second coming. Okay. okay. So now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
I think it's verse 13. Verse 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now that sounds like somebody that's buried. They're sleeping in Jesus. They're asleep right. now. They're asleep. Okay. That picture is death. Right. Okay. For right. this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. They're the ones in the ground. Right. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Now they're in the ground. Yeah, they're in the ground. The, the graves open up. The resurrection takes place. Where do they go? Read, read okay. where they go. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, so the graves open up. They go up into the air. They meet Jesus Christ in the air. Right. In the cloud. Right. They don't go up to heaven. Right. Did you read heaven anywhere? No. No, okay. no Jesus is coming down. Yeah. Okay. The dead who are buried rise up, not cremated, anybody that's whatever, their body or their, their spirit is now meeting Jesus in the air. Uh, and then those of us that are, are of Jesus will then also come up. Now, exactly. I, and we change in a twinkling, I think I remember. We, cha reading. we make a change in the twinkling of an eye. Into spirit. In the blink of an eye. Okay. okay. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, I believe it is. 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. That would mean a dead body inherit uh, uh, a spirit. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Okay, so we're going to be changed from what? From physical human beings to spirit beings. Okay. A spirit being an eternal you're going to live forever. Right. You can't die. Go ahead, read okay. that. I'll back it up a little bit. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there it is, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, spirit, and we shall be changed to spirit. For this corrupt corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks to be God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Isn't this, isn't this wonderful, Dave? Yeah. We come back and we, we start ruling on this world. I'd like you to read Galatians chapter 20, verses, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20. Verses 1 to 4. Revelations 20. Verses 1 to 4. While you're looking up the scriptures, don't forget, folks, uh, Lazarus and the rich man, those t and uh, where are Enoch and Elisha? So chapter 20 of Revelation, verses 1 to 4. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. And he shut him up 
and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Go ahead, keep reading. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or foreheads or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So it's a thousand years before heaven. Yeah. So we're going to be here on the earth. We're going to be ruling here on the earth with Jesus Christ, the saints. Now how about well, the people that have died but are not of Christ? Okay, well, you can read the very next verse. It tells you what happens to them. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Okay, they so they stay there. They stay there until the thousand years were finished. Okay. Okay, the first resurrection, read the first resurrection, the next verse. Okay, blessed. Yeah, oh no, ahead. okay. Blessed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. The truth is so beautiful, Dave, okay? Rather than everybody's up in heaven when nobody's up in heaven. Right. You see the lies? Right. Yes, yes. They're complete lies. What, folks, when you go to church and your pastor or teacher or preacher talks about going up to heaven, why don't you just ask him what, about these scriptures that show no man, start out with John chapter 3, verse 13. Show him in the Bible, no man has ascended up to heaven. Right. And that's the truth. That's not what I was taught. Well, folks, we're coming to the end of the program. Why don't you uh, write for these, call us for these two free booklets, Where Are Enoch and Elisha, Lazarus and the Rich Man? And uh, Dave, why don't you mention oh. your booklet there? Free publication. It's called Issachar. It's, uh, it's using the Bible and personal experience. Uh, myself and three other writers and an editor we put out information, we request people to write in to us, we would be glad to publish your work. Just give me a call at 856-952-7343 and I'll be glad to send it out at no charge at all. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate your help here in proving today that heaven is not the place where dead people go right off the bat uh, and we understand it. Well, this is Meyer Stahl and Dave Gallus, Dave Gallus saying goodbye, friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575 650 Seven three five nine. That's five seven five six five zero seven three five nine. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What Is Truth. Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings. <laughs>